Oh, we're going to go and we're going to act. Sorry? Parameter variation, yeah. Okay, now for this one, we're going to do something rather different. Instead of just running this thing 10 times, we're going to actually vary parameter sizes, okay? Uh, or parameters. So what we're going to do here is we're going to draw, uh, we're going to do two types of variation. I'm going to vary overweight hazard here. Um, uh, in a range, okay? I'm gonna do what would be called a one-way sensitivity analysis where we vary the overweight hazard coefficient from 0.9 or say 0.8 to one with a step size of 0 0.1. I'm sorry, 0 0.01. So what this is gonna do is it's gonna change the value of this parameter systematically from 0.8 to 1 with a step size of 0 0.1, 0 0.01 rather. So it's going to be 0 0.8 and then it'll be 0 0.81 and then 0 0.82 and 0.83 all the way until it's it's 1, okay? Now we could do this for many parameters at once and and I think you'll get the sense of this but let's go see how this varies the results over time and indeed how it varies the costs and the, um, the other things. So here I'm running it, ladies and gentlemen. There it is with 0.8. And, and we're gonna see how, do, how much does it bend this curve, okay? Um, we're running it out. How many times will it run now? Roughly. About 20 of them, right? And I think it's going to be 20. So, uh, yeah, so it's, it, it'll be, tw sorry? Yeah, 40 runs. F 40, 40 runs. It's actually running this, though, just, it's not running the baseline. Oh, yeah. uh, it's, it's not running the intervention. So it's just 20, 20 runs. And, and this is actually changing it there um, successively. And, and actually, you could see greater variability than we could previously. So it's running at 20 times. And since, you know, if we were to, to lower um, that by that amount, you know, how, mo how much would it change things? Now, obviously, you could further do replications for them. Um, so ladies and gentlemen, here's the variability that's induced, okay? Okay. Um, Kirk, do you need me to frob anything? Okay. Are there startup conditions for this experiment? Um, the, uh, I was, I was, uh, the, the uh, varied range. Yeah, so it's, it's um, this becoming overweight hazard coefficient is between 0.8 and 1 with step 0.01. Now, there was a fair degree of variability there, but how much of that was because of stochastics? Ladies and gentlemen, in any logic, and, and I will, um, uh, in any logic, we can go and further run it for each of those values, like point, point 0.8, point 0.81, point 0.82. We can run it a specified number of times. So we can run it, say, for each of them five times because each of them might yield different results because of stochastics. So that might yield, you know, a broader band of, of results. And so we're going to say run here. And what we're going to see now is it's running each of those five times. So instead of running 20 times, it's now going to run how many times? 100 times, ladies and gentlemen, no less, 100. And that may yield greater variability because, you know, there's, there's stochastics atop the changes to parameter values, okay? This is going to run out. No. This is going to take a while, ladies and gentlemen, and I'm not inclined to wait because time is a fleeting. But you could run it out. Um, you could run it out some. But I'm going to I'm uh, I'm going to make the plot thicken a little bit here. Okay. Um, sorry. <laughs> yeah. Um, okay. Uh, so, ladies and gentlemen, um, we could run this. We could leave it running and it will be running at five times for each of the values. 
But I'm going to do something else instead. I am going to copy this. I'm going to say copy. And I'm going to go up here and again do paste. OK? And now it's going to be baseline 50 year Monte Carlo, Monte Carlo parameter variation. OK? And ladies and gentlemen, instead of doing this in a fixed range, what I'm going to do instead is, is do a free form where we, in fact, ladies and gentlemen, draw this value from a normal distribution. So I'm actually going to sample the value of this from a normal distribution. Um, and the normal distribution will be centered at, okay, and remember, the standard deviation comes first, oddly enough. 0.02 and it's going to be centered at 0.95 mu. Okay? So I'm going to draw this from a normal distribution. Now, ladies and gentlemen, I I should really be careful cuz it in principle it's a white swan but it could be below 0. So I should really say max of 0 and this. So it can never go below 0 to be really careful. Let me put that up on the big screen. Boom. There you go. Because if this in principle could go negative and I don't want it to go negative. I, if it's negative I want to treat it as zero. Otherwise we'll, we'll, have, we'll use this. Okay? So here we're going to be drawing this. We're going to run it ten times drawing this value from that. Now we're also running it with replication. So I'm going to turn replications off. Okay? There we go. And now I'm going to run it, ladies and gentlemen. Could be from a big distribution. Yeah. Yeah. So, so, um, yeah. So, so if you want to find what sort of distributions would be applicable, um, we could go up here and Unfortunately, we can't insert it while it's running, but this disk choose probability distribution will give you. I'm going to let this run here, and and we will um, and we'll we'll then go s yeah. see that. Okay. Yeah, it only works up in main and, and other classes. It doesn't show up in the experiment. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Which is yeah, that's helpful. Yeah. Thanks, Dylan. Yeah. Why you don't just run um. Yeah, it's a good question. So, is there a reason why not to run things at maximum memory? Um. Uh. It can take somewhat more resources if you were to always run it at maximum memory, um, which might make other programs behave slower, but um. And, and it might, it, depending how your computer is configured, if you're configured to use virtual memory, something called virtual memory, it might, it might sometimes be unhappy because of that. But, uh, but, but, you know, on many computers, it wouldn't be a huge problem. It's just, I, I'm not actually sure that Java uses all that memory unless it needs to. So it just allows it to, to grow that large. Yeah. So whatever that cryptically Probably if they're talking about paging virtual memory yeah, and they, stuff. They, they yeah, so um, it, uh, you know, it's a good question. I, the way I look for it is if this thing gets close to the red zone or becomes red down here, that's when I increase memory. Mm -hmm. But, you know, if, if, if it's going to run overnight and it's, you're concerned about it, I don't see a problem yanking it up a little bit. I'd be cautious about advising as a general rule, always run it with max memory, because I, I, it strikes me that that might yield unnecessarily slow behavior, interaction with other programs, et cetera. Um, among other things, actually, this is an important factoid. Um, so, and I don't want to go into this in detail, but the way Java works, um, 
it, um, it allows you to sort of allocate memory, request more memory. I, I need more space. I need more space. And it's only when it starts to get tight sometimes that it really cleans up. And so if you ask for most memory, it may be starting to fill up with lots of junk that aren't needed anymore. That's possible. And then it'll, it'll basically end up becoming this gargantuan beast using memory unnecessarily. And so having an occasional situation where it gets a bit tight and it cleans up is not a bad thing. It's kind of like doing a spring cleaning. Imagine if your house was like, you know, a million square feet. You, you might just, <laughs> I don't mean you, but, but you know, one might accumulate craft all over the place. You know, you'd, you'd you just the, keep moving instead of cleaning. You just like move around right the room. That, that's right. That's right. And then when you got to clean, it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's an ordeal. It's an ordeal. And so, uh, so sometimes having a little bit of, you know, a, a limit on things can be good because it will force it to clean up. What I'm saying, if it gets so large, it will start to squeeze out other programs, and suddenly your music player will start to skip, and it won't won't play that nicely, or, or if you're in the middle of an R session, it will start to behave really slowly, and, and that wouldn't be pleasant. But if you've got like eight gigs of RAM on your computer, and you give four, uh, like by default, and you're not doing anything other than like email or internet or something, like you're, I would say, I, I would be surprised if anything negative happened. Mm. Yeah. Okay, yeah, so, but, but as a general rule, of always doing maximum amount, I'd be cautious about that. Yeah. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, so this is a result of a Monte Carlo sampling from this. And, um, you know, obviously, again, we're running it after only 10 runs. It would give, if you were to run this overnight, you'd see a, very likely you'd see a very nice gradation. And there'd be some, some runs off to the side. You could also run it with replications to capture the effect of of, of um, stochastic uncertainty. Okay, so that's some things with parameter variation experiments. Um, suffice it to say that you could also s sample, you know, we, we only did it for one type at a time, but we could also run, you know, we could change this one as well and do this from 0.8 to, to 1 and the same, you know, po every 0.02 or what have you, and we could do multi-way sensitivity analyses. So you're varying them in a grid and seeing what the results are. So, so in any logic, you can quite nicely do sensitivities, um, sensitivity analysis using um, one or more ranges, and you can do Monte Carlo-based sensitivity analyses drawing from distributions. Okay? Uh, any questions about that before I go on to something different? I'm going to go on to calibration next. Could you show us the, um, the um, distribution? Sure. Okay. Now, d as Dylan said, uh, Dylan pointed out to me that this distribution thing is set to run. It's set to show w the possible distributions in places where you can insert. And this is a very special place here that, that it doesn't do auto completion and so on. So I'm going to go down here and then I should be able to select it. This distribution selector allows you to choose between different distributions that any logic has built in. This, for example, is a beta distribution. And as Tracy said, a beta distribution would have some nice features because it's, it's compact support. It doesn't go on arbitrarily far on both sides. You wouldn't need that max zero type of thing. And you know, you can, you can go and kind of uh, frob various values here and, and, um, and see how the, the results show, OK? in terms of the, the, um, the values uh, for it. So this is a beta, there's Bernoulli, there's Uniform, there's uh, Cauchy and, and Chi-squared and Gamma. So you can, draw from, you can draw from distributions and this will give you a sense of the, um, the shape of the distribution that um, one might see coming out of these things, okay? Um, uh, so Weibull and, and Poisson, et cetera. Um, so uh, not only that, it will give you a sense of the shape, but then if you, if you choose a distribution and you, know, you were to say, I want a lambda of four for Poisson, you could say, okay, and it will actually insert the code for it, which is you know, kind of nice. Um, 
Anyway, that's the distribution chooser. And for obscure reasons, um, it's not automatically enabled here, but you could copy that code up to here. Yeah. It's, I mean, in, in other words, I could copy from inserting it here and copy it up to there. Okay. So, so that's good. Okay. Parameter variation. Any questions about that further? Okay. So we're going to... Now, why would you use parameter variation? Well, ladies and gentlemen, often we have model parameters um, you know, that, that represent assumptions in our models. And we, we typically have limited time to investigate parameters. And sometimes there's certain groups of parameters that are less well known. And parameter sensitivity analysis can help us um, marshal our limited time, can help us take stock of, of what we know and what we don't. And, and si if we systematically perform sensitivity analyses, um, as we vary parameters within plausible ranges or in some fixed, you know, within 10% of their current estimate or what have you, we can guess about to which parameters models are really most sensitive and to which they're not. And, and that can help us put our time into data collection on things that really matter the most, where that time will give the greatest bang for the buck, where, in other words, we can get we can, we can most collapse uncertainty about the model. Um, so parameter sensitivity analyses is one of those processes that's quite helpful to, to prioritize how we spend our time. It's also considered you know, uh, an almost essential feature of getting modeling pu papers published in a lot of domains. They'll say, well, if you didn't perform a sensitivity analysis, um, you, the job's not done. You've looked at it for one, possible set of parameters, but you really haven't done your homework in looking at it for many types of parameters, okay? Um, so, um, so I would say, uh, you know, if, if you're gonna, if you're planning to um, present on your model, if you're planning to publish it, if you're planning to give recommendations from it, it really behooves you to spend some time doing sensitivity analyses around, around parameters. And you know, at the least, you could you could say, okay, you're gonna take, you know, um, ten percent less than your value, ten percent more, see how much it varies. But you might actually have several estimates for a parameter and vary it within that range or draw it from a distribution. Okay, so quite straightforward in any logic. The bigger challenge is not the mechanics of doing it. As you've seen, it's pretty straightforward once you know the basics, once you know how to build two D histograms, once you know how to do histograms to summarize the output once you uh, uh, know how to run it many times um, to examine the effects of stochastics. Any realizations? Um, um, rather, you, you want to approach it from a conceptual standpoint, which, which parameters, over which parameters do you want to perform the sensitivity analysis? Okay, ladies and gentlemen, so that's version five of the model. I'm going to now upload that model for your perusal. And we're going to go on to a somewhat different topic, calibration.